Hey everybody, this is your host Dexter Jacobs, and um, this week it's Thursday, so that means we have an interview for you. Uh, on Saturday, Ben and I sat down with J.M. Bryan. He is a writer of comic books, so uh, we obviously talked about that, and he has a Kickstarter going on. I th- believe uh, as of today, uh, the, the podcast going out, you have seven days to go back it, and this is a project that's almost 200% funded, so if you go back it now, you're definitely going to get the book, um, as well as some other uh, cool backer rewards, so I uh, recommend checking that out, head over to Kickstarter, search for Closer, uh, it's the first thing that should pop up, it's a black and white uh, comic um, with some really nice, solid uh, design going on there, so it, it should be easy to find. It's also a staff favorite on Kickstarter, so uh, that's really nice. And um, yeah, so if if uh, you you know listen to this podcast, really enjoy his work, head on over to Twitter, uh, look him up at J M Brian, no J M B Wright, J M B Wrights. And uh, as always, you can find in, uh, Indie Comic Ninja at Indie Comic Ninja on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Head on over to our website, too. We have a lot of um, uh, written reviews for the comics that we talk about and a lot of comics that we don't talk about on the Indie Tuesday show. So head over to IndieComic.Ninja. Uh, see some of the reviews there. Uh, always, uh, you can leave comments and let us know what you think about stuff as well. So, uh, uh, also, I guess I should bring up, head on over to iTunes if you're enjoying the show. Give us a rate and a review. Subscribe uh, and let us know how you feel. Um, also, if you really like the show, which I really hope you do, head on over to patreon.com slash ninja, or go to our website and click on the Patreon link there. Um, you can also listen to the show on YouTube, um, for all you people who don't like to listen on your podcast apps, um, but we're also pretty much on every app, um, if you're listening to this streaming on Facebook or somewhere. So, thanks for listening, uh, and I hope you enjoy this, uh, interview between Ben and uh, Jam, Brian, and myself. So, thank you very much. Here it is. I guess, uh... The first question is, uh, how about just giving a pitch for the the book? The, it's the closer. It's actually it's closer. Oh, closer. it's just closer. Yep. Yeah. Okay. For some reason, yeah. I thought I remembered seeing somewhere saying the closer. I don't know why. Yeah, oh. I I've gotten a couple different people like tweeting, sharing stuff about it, and it it you know the title gets changed. It's not a big deal to me, you know. But well, and I could see it going both ways, I guess, because yeah, uh, like closer like a relationship which it seems to be based on and then the closer like maybe right. having something to do with either the kidnapper or the main character guy i don't know yeah it's or like... the agent being a closer of some sort i don't know but right. uh but anyway so it's just closer mm-hmm. right yeah. all right yeah um so why don't you just give us a, a short pitch for that and we can go from there sure yeah well um closer is actually uh i it, it was a novel i started writing a few years ago and i've tried to write it like five times. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. It, and it's never quite worked out. And I think the reason it never worked out is because, uh, I needed like visuals with it. It's yeah. like, I, whenever I try and write, it's very much like a, a visual t- kind of storytelling. And so, um, this past year I started writing it and it's a mystery thriller kind of got some other stuff going on in it. Uh, it's about a guy whose wife goes missing Um, and then she reappears a year later and there's this serial kidnapper, a killer kind of guy going around that they think did it. Um, but nobody's really quite sure after she comes back. Um, and it's very much like, you know, imagine if somebody you're very close to goes missing for a year, comes back, you know, the dynamic changes, stuff gets messed up. Um, and so, you know, he's trying to deal with that. Um, and then she at the same time is dealing with things like, uh, she has, um, physical scars on her body that, you know, she deals with her, uh, image and things like that. And so there's all these dynamics going on. And then at the same time, what happened, you know, asking Mm -hmm. the question of where did she go? What happened? And, um, 
the first book is just like the setup of it, the first issue. And so the second issue is really going to kind of be like a fast and furious conclusion of, uh, what happened and it's going to kind of all come together in in one 22 page issue but the first issue just sets up all of that and sets up the dynamics uh of that and it's very much a uh faith uh struggle with faith um mm-hmm. things like that because there's a church involved and mm-hmm. and stuff uh not really sure i've never had to pitch it <laughs> uh, to someone so yeah you know, this is my first comic and it's something that i'm very passionate about and it's something that you know I, i've often asked my question to myself well, what would i do if my deepest desire could be fulfilled like hmm. there's i feel like there's always something that everybody needs or wants yeah. that you know you can't get and what if you could you know what would you do for it and that's going to come into play um as well in the comic so yeah. Interesting. So, um, so how long have you been working on this story? You said you started it as a novel. Yeah. Um, the story has been in the works for probably about five years. Okay. Uh, I think I started writing this one when I met my wife, uh, and that was, uh, five years ago. So nice. wow. a- approximately that long. So, mm-hmm. uh, and then I did, I just started writing it as a comic last year. Okay. So, okay trying to adapt that into a comic has been uh, an interesting process. Yeah. So, so. so you, um, you had mentioned it was a story for you at first. So, and this is your first comic book attempt. Um, yeah. is comic book writing something you've kind of wanted to get into for a while or, or have you been into comics for a while? Yeah, I've, I've always loved comics. I'm actually, one of my, uh, cousins is a comic book writer and artist. Um, so I've always liked comic books ever since I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, and the medium itself is always, I've always enjoyed it. I mean, I don't know why somebody wouldn't love just a good comic book to sit down with, you know, and yeah. they're short, they're quick, you know, you can just enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then last year I was able to help out a friend with, uh, some comic stuff he was working on. And, uh, he kind of encouraged me to, you know, if I feel like I can write one, go ahead and write one and yeah. and see what happens. And so uh, I did, and uh, it's been a blast so far. So cool. So yeah. um, then, so you're relatively new to comics as far as the creation process, or yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, then my next my my main question there would be, uh, as a writer, I suppose, how did you find your illustrator? Um, I actually so there's a a Reddit community and it's okay. comic book collaborations, Reddit community. And I just put an ad out that I was looking for an artist and I got about 60 emails, Dang. Okay. <laughs> um, which most of them are usually just people who kind of scour the internet for ads and it doesn't really matter, you know, what the story is. They'll just kind of do it, which is fine. Yeah. You know, if that's, if that's what you do for work, it's the easy way to do that. So, mm-hmm. um, and then I started talking with him, uh, and he liked the story. Um, he, we were able to work out a very good deal with, in terms of him doing both books for a reasonable price, considering my budget and right. things like that. And um, so, yeah, that's how that worked out. And uh, I was really happy. It, it kind of all happened over a weekend, and all of a sudden, I had this thing coming together, and I, you know, I kind of got swept up in it. Nice, nice. Yeah. Um... Yeah, um, the artwork is phenomenal, man. It it really kind of harkens back to, to like um, I was telling Dexter. Have you ever read the comic book Love and Rockets? I don't think so. No, it's it's kind of considered to be one of the one of the better like nonfiction uh, graphic novels. It, it's not really part of like the uh, the big two Marvel and DC type world. It, it's more of an independent uh, graphic novel, but it, sure. it's very much that like black and white style artwork that that's high contrast and stuff. And it, mm-hmm. it just, the Hernandez brothers were the guys who wrote on that, but those are wonderful books. Um, is it going to I stay black and white or is it? Yeah. Gonna... yeah. Okay, great. I love that about it. Um, so what are, what are some of your favorite comic books? Oh, so a lot of my favorite ones have actually popped up recently because I just, I think in the past uh, couple of years have gotten back into reading. Um, some of my favorite ones right now, you guys just read Paper Girls Volume 1. Yeah, that was this, a good one. 
was it last week? Uh, yep. Paper Girls is just amazing. Oh my um, gosh, fantastic! Man. Yeah, <laughs> I, I sat down with that first volume and I'm reading it, and I I often talk to my wife who has no comic book knowledge whatsoever mm-hmm. about what I'm reading, and I'm just like, you have to read this. Like you would love this. This is just it's crazy. Um, so Paper Girls, um, I love Black Science. Oh yeah, I, we'll be, we're going to be reading love. that in a couple of weeks actually. So. Oh man, it's so good. It's so so good. Um, trying to think of ones like that I I pick up every time a new one comes out. <clears throat> Let me look at my shelf. I have a hard time picking favorites. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, tell me about it, man. <laughs> Story of my life. Um, I'm reading uh, Faith. It's a Valiant comic oh. right now. And it's really good. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. I've been looking for somebody who reads that because I, I don't feel like I can find anyone who reads it. But it always looked kind of interesting to me because it's yeah. uh, basically an overweight, uh, like, su- female Superman, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And it's valuable. Yeah. 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 Some of the dudes at the comic shop were trying to pitch that to my wife and I. It, it looks really interesting. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. But I just – I never picked it up just because I don't know anyone who's ever read it. And so I've never gotten any good advice on it, I suppose. And I'm a little late to the game as far as, like, yeah. to buy it. And, I, you know, I don't want to drop, like, 20 bucks on a volume if I'm not going right. to make it kind of thing because I'm already dropping enough money on comics. Yeah, so. yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I hear you. But, uh, no, it's good to hear that somebody's enjoying that book because um, I, I bought, uh, I think, a newer harbinger like is it harbingers um they kind of like rebooted that series i think and so she was in it uh because mm-hmm. it's just kind of like the the valiant version of the avengers maybe is yeah a really loose way of saying that and so she was in that and i liked her character a little bit that she was in it but i just i didn't know how well that translated to a, uh, a solo series oh wow uh, yeah. so, so that's actually a series that was spurred off of another series then well, I, I I just picked it up like randomly. A yeah. bookstore in town was having like a buy two get one free on all graphic novels and That's trade paperbacks nice. and stuff. <laughs> yeah. So like, around Christmas, I just picked up like this huge stack of of trades to read, and I burned it. through the first two volumes of that really quickly because it was um, really good. So out like other than the knowledge of that, I yeah. I have no idea, but it was. It was very good. And is awesome. her, her like day job? She's like a blogger or something, isn't she? Yeah, she kind of works for like a TMZ kind of. Okay. So, oh, okay. So, so okay. even more Superman in that sense, where she's basically yeah. a journalist. That's funny. Yeah. She's she's like a. And it's funny because she's not like in the main journalism side, so she's yeah, kind of like on yeah. the, the side of that. So yeah, that's good. Interesting. That's cool. Yeah. Um. What? So when you. When you say you you were kind of writing stories and stuff before you wrote comics, I mean, what what else have you written before? Um, I've written a, a lot of uh, short, a lot of short stories. You know, five ten pages um, here and there. Um, I lost a lot of my writing, unfortunately. My uh, I had a computer that died, and I lost oh, like man. everything, which was quite a bummer. Um, yeah. And I, of course, never nowadays I never get hard copies of anything. It's always on a hard yeah. drive or, or something like that. So I've done a lot of short story writings and things like that. Um, I wrote uh, a novel here. It was probably like eight years ago for National Novel Writing Month in November. Right. Oh, um, cool. So I kind of threw that together, and it has sat unedited for a very long time. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So. Well, now that you're getting so, published, you should get some editors to look at your stuff. Well, yeah, if if I can do that, that would be a great, great opportunity. Yeah. Um, well, I, I mean, so piggybacking onto that answer, then would you say it's it's it was helpful to have been writing in those short stories, like so in the shorter form, to then be able to write more easily for a comic book? Yeah, I think so. Um, because of the 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 strange medium that comic books are because you can have them short you can have them long yeah. series it, it does one shots I mean it doesn't really matter uh, you know if you want to write something just write it yeah and right. so um, like with my experience of, of short stories uh, it's been beneficial in that I can work out a story in a twenty two page spam mm-hmm. but it's also kind of difficult because if I'm looking at like a twelve issue series that's a long story um, <laughs> yeah and, yeah and, and um so i'm working on something right now that's like long and, and it's going to be difficult for me it's going to be a challenge and i'm trying to like challenge myself in working kind of more long form less than than short but for this one it was two two issues it was originally going to be a one shot but 
I wanted to go into two parts to kind of add some suspense to it. So, right, right. well, and I, I I love the fact that you're you you start with a two issue because everyone who writes a comic book, it seems like myself included, like I'm working on a script for a comic book right now, and it's like you always want to think big. You know, you're like, man, I yeah. want this to be a big ongoing series with like yeah. I, I want to write a 300 page graphic novel, and I, you know, and then I wanted to yeah. go off into other side stories, and it's like, no, just. 28 pages like get your idea across and then like and then go yeah. from there and like yeah. build because learn how to construct a story in that manner and then go on to something larger you know you start with short stories and move to comic books and it's a very like progressive thing so i really like the yeah. the way that you kind of approach that and it it translates really well into the kind of preview that you sent over to us for for closer yeah, good. and I know you had a, you have a good cliffhanger. The the ten pages that you sent us that's a yeah that's a good cliffhanger right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, I actually got some. I actually got some bad feedback on that because huh. they said it wasn't too. It wasn't enough of a cliffhanger, and I was like, I, I'm pretty sure that's a good cliffhanger. I mean, it's only it's yeah. not even halfway through the issue. So yeah, I was gonna say who who, a whole, who gave you that feedback? Um, I posted a couple things on Reddit, um, mm -hmm. which oh. Reddit's a Reddit's not always the greatest place to post your work because I think people are waiting there with with torches and pitchforks. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. just ready. I think I've I've always, I've always stayed away from Reddit for that for that reason because I oh. although I've heard I've heard some constructive things coming out of it, but I've also heard a lot of negative feedback about that site and just people talking trash and stuff like that. It's good if you find the right people to to communicate with on there. But. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Uh, one thing that stood out to me, not to detract from your writing at all, but one thing that stood out to me about Closer was like right when you open it, the the logo um, or the cover is just beautiful, man. It's it's really cool. Did you play any part in sort of developing that kind of like maze sort of thing that that goes around Closer? Yeah, that's actually that's my I made that cover. Um, it's nice. That's the variant cover. I don't have okay. the regular cover yet, so oh, okay. Um, but yeah, the maze to me is a big, it's a big part of the story and just kind of the navigating the question of what happened to his wife and trying mm -hmm. to find the answer to that is a lot like just navigating this maze. And if you notice in the maze, it, there's no way to get to the center of it. Um, there's oh, no wow. gap there. And so, you know, oh, it kind of right. asks the question, can I even solve this puzzle? Right. Is there even an answer to it? So, man, it's really cool. Yeah. And it, the the simplicity of it and stuff really kind of reminds me of you know one thing I love about Image Comics and I've always loved about them is the simplicity of their covers and just the oh, yeah. the design work that goes behind that they're just yeah. really striking and like you know I know you can't judge a book by its cover but when it has a good cover it kind of like gets you off on the right foot with the story yeah, so for sure so, yeah yeah it's really really nice work on that. Um, appreciate that and and that leads into i think a question that i was or i know ben mentioned it and i thought it was a good question so uh being have you tried pitching like this story to anybody or were you always uh planning on self-publishing it um i was pretty much always planning on self-publishing it um the reason for that being i wanted to see if i could do it right um before i before i tried pub pitching to anybody i kind of want to have a full knowledge of the process yeah yeah um I want to know how it works that way. I mean, I just, I know how business works. And yeah. so mm -hmm. I don't want to get, I don't want to get screwed out of something really. And yeah. if I have mm -hmm. a knowledge of how things work, maybe that'll help me in the future. But yeah, um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure when I'll be able to pitch to a publisher. It just kind of depends. It'll probably be a little bit. So, yeah, yeah. you know, this is one of those things like it's only two issues. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of publishers will publish just a two issue a good point, yeah. comic. But, um, yeah, you know, yeah. this will give me some information. Right. Image does do some like magazines and stuff yeah. um, where they kind of like they put together like a collection of, of short stories. But, yeah, that yeah. would be that would be much smaller than what you're doing now. Um, do yeah. you do you have any publishers that are like your favorite or or things that you're like, man, I'm always reading stuff. I mean, obviously, Image is wonderful, but uh, other than Image, yeah. um, Image is a big one for me. Um, I love Image and their the, just the stuff they come out with now. Um, yeah. You know, it's and I know most of it is creator owned, so it's all, yeah. you know, these guys come up with these stories, and I'm just astounded at how they're able to come up with some of the stuff they're able to um mm -hmm. i i am 
a Marvel fan. Yeah. I'm, I've never been a big DC fan. I like Batman, but that's about it. Um, uh. So I like Marvel. I like Marvel stuff more, yeah. but I also don't read a lot of superhero comics. Um, yeah. It, it's kind of... I love Marvel, but they do the same thing over and over again. So, you know, yeah. to me, it's like if you read one arc, you've read a lot of them. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I would agree with that. I think that's what's kind of what led me into really enjoying indie comics more. Um, yeah. And and I think just the fact that you are willing to end a story where it needs to end and and yeah. not bring somebody back to life because it you know makes the story a little bit better again or you know stuff yeah. like that. But that's it's, that's nice. It's kind of like big banks and stuff. Like every, every decision that they make is kind of fueled by like the bottom line and the oh, price yeah. and the price points and stuff. It's yeah. like you know we killed Superman yeah. off to to make a buck on a bunch of variant issues and <laughs> we're we're gonna bring him back so that we can make some more bucks on yeah. some more variant issues. You know, and it's like man, but that yeah. that story should have been left where it was. Yeah, you know? or, yeah. Well, I know. Yeah. I know. Uh, back in. Uh, uh, like 2012 maybe uh during the there's it was like the last major phoenix saga for marvel i bought the issue where xavier dies because i was just like oh xavier's dying that's big yeah. and then i bought like uh, a wolverine and the x-men like the next month and xavier's in it i was like wait what yeah <laughs> yeah i thought he was dead <laughs> It's it's kind of one of those American pastimes, you know. That I'm always, yeah. I'm always gonna, and I'm a DC fan right now because I feel like at the moment they have better writing chops. But that those tables can turn in yeah. in a hot second, yeah. you know. That at any given point in history, Marvel's had better stories, you know, and or DC has. But um, yeah. but yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. Kinda. Well, uh, <laughs> you mentioned bottom line earlier and 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 money, uh, which then makes me think of uh, your Kickstarter. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and um just i mean just the fact that you're doing a kickstarter and uh congratulations you've hit your goal at yeah, least. I have. Yeah. so uh, awesome. so i mean i guess people don't have to back it now but you are uh, adding a lot of really nice stretch goals i've noticed um because i think initially it looked like you were starting where it was just digital maybe yeah. and then some of the stretch goals have been print am i right yeah. okay yeah so uh i wanted to start out so i i set a fairly low goal it's five it was five hundred dollars mm-hmm. uh and that was basically to offset the cost of making the next issue. Mm -hmm. And I thought if I can hit this $500 goal, I'll be able to make the next issue. It won't cost me any more money. Um, and we'll have, I'll have two digital issues that I can sell on comiXology and stuff like that. Well, um, we got, I got like three quarters of the way through the first week or something. And I was like, okay, well maybe this will go past this. Um, (laughs) Uh, which to me is astounding. The fact that, so I'm at a hundred or 181% funded. Yeah. Oh, wow. You've almost doubled it. I'm just looking at it. Yeah. I, and to me, that's astounding. Cause I didn't, I have no connections in the comic book industry whatsoever. Yeah. And so this is just really cool that it's just people who want to read it, um, yeah. and stuff like that. So I decided to price out some printing options. Um, I have a print shop here in town where I live that's going to print it for me. Oh, nice. Um, it's always nice to go So around. I don't have to pay for shipping. <laughs> Very nice. Which is the, the biggest cost, it seems like. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm going to be able to print it, ship it to the people who buy physical copies and things like that Yeah. Um, for fairly cheap. And then be able to pay for the next issue, most of it, um, if we reach the... Final stretch goal. So I'm at nine hundred and five dollars right now. If we reach twelve hundred dollars, it'll pay for the next issue. Oh, very uh, nice. And if we reach that, I'm giving every backer the second issue when it's completed well, in that's digital form. Worth backing so. for. And just just for the listeners, where where can we go to find your Kickstarter? Um, you can just go to Kickstarter and search for um, closer issue number one because the URL to the Kickstarter is long and complicated. Yeah. Okay. That's um, the weird thing about Kickstarter. I don't like it. I yeah. wish you could make a custom URL. Yeah. Um, but if you, my Twitter handle is JMB writes. Okay. And I have it as a pinned tweet on the top of my page. So awesome. Uh, and I, I tweet about it, you know, five, 10 times a day. So <laughs> very cool. Yeah. Um, what is this? I, I'm seeing a couple people uh, doing it and I've just not never bothered to ask anybody. What is this make 100 edition? Um, so that's actually what got me to do the Kickstarter. Um, mm-hmm. I got an email from Kickstarter in January saying, hey, we're doing this thing. 
to try and encourage people to make stuff. And mm -hmm. it's just called the Make 100 campaign. And the thing behind that was you launch a Kickstarter campaign and you have one of the tiers be a limited to 100 okay. thing. And so I made this limited to 100 tier of special edition prints. Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, and You've almost filled them. There's only five left. So we're doing, I mean, we're doing good. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. Um, I'm really quite happy with the way things have, have gone with that. And the make 100 is what got me to do it. I mean, yeah. I was always tossing it around in my head and then I was talking to my wife about it and she's like, do it, just try it out. You know, yeah. it's worth a shot. So sure. nice. Um, well, I mean, and that kind of leads into what, uh, my next question, which is like, what, what was your strategy, I guess, going into Kickstarter? Cause I know a lot of what I've, what I hear about Kickstarter is you need to have, um, like a following essentially, uh, yeah. if anything, just to get the word out, but then to also be the people who are backing you. And so, right. um, I mean, was that part of your strategy or did you have a different strategy? Um, I didn't have a strategy, which is <laughs> again, why I'm so surprised that this has worked out because I, I pretty much put it together and I yeah. started tweeting about it. Yeah. And sharing it with people and like I follow quite a few of like in just, you know, small indie comic creators and I was like, Hey, here's yeah. my Kickstarter. Could you share it for me? Yeah. Um, right. The best thing to do is don't ask people directly for money. Yeah. Uh, and so I've had a couple friends who have backed it, but like all the I mean, I have I think there's fifty seven backers or something like yeah. that. And yeah. I think fifty three to 54 or 54 of them are people that I've never met in real life. Oh, that's so oh, wow. uh, I, I, my, one of my best friends uh, from high school backed it. My, uh, some in-laws backed it. And then uh, the rest of them are people I don't know. Oh, so, nice. well, I mean, it's, a, it, it looks good. Um, and I, and I'm sure that has a lot to do with it uh, for one thing, but then uh, I noticed too Kickstarter. It's one of the pro products we love or projects yeah. we love, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. That, that's huge to to get on that list. So, so that's awesome. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. Um. So plans after this, after closer is over. I know you had mentioned sort of something longer that you're going to be working on. Is that yeah. something that you're at liberty to discuss, or is or is that something you want to talk about at all? Yeah. Um. I I can't go into a lot of detail because I'm still and pounding out the details with um an artist and mm -hmm. some other people, but I'm putting together. Um, kind of a artistic team for a web comic that is not going to be solely a web comic. It's going to be a page a week um, regular comic that I'm going to assemble once each, like once we get enough for each issue. Yeah. Post it online, um, and it's going to be about. And I don't want to give too much away here, but um, it's going to be set in the late '80s and. It's focusing around a guy who practices psychometry, which is um, this. It was this pseudoscience in the '80s where, like, if I were to touch this pen, I could like psychically connect to the pen and and figure out where it was sold and hmm. all this different stuff to it. And um, it's about this guy who uh, is able to kind of read memories based on touching inanimate objects and things like that. Okay. Oh, and, cool. So he's a private detective who ends up solving some murders that lead to something a lot bigger. Nice. So um, the plan right now is for it to run for a while. Um, yeah. But nice. I'm still working on details and stuff like that. So nothing's set in stone, and I probably won't have anything out there till after the summer at least. So. Right. Well, something to look forward to. I know I'm sold on reading it already. Yeah. And, and you, <laughs> that had sounds good. you had mentioned that's going to be a web comic then. So just yeah. web, web only on that one, huh? Yeah. So it's going to start out. The plan right now is to start out as a web, a web comic and do a page a week. Um, and then once it's assembled as a comic, I will print it. Okay. Um, and you can um, buy, you'll be able to buy individual issues if you want to help support the comic. Right. Um, and I'm going to be able to throw some behind the scenes sketches and things like that. And there's stuff you won't be able to just get right. um, from reading the web comic. Um, and actually one of the inspirations for that, I'm not sure if you guys have ever read the web comic Vanguard by Dan Butcher. I've heard of it. Uh, uh, Vanguard uh, is a really great series that's been going on for 
I don't know how long he said it was. It's been going on for a couple of years, but I sat down basically in a weekend and read the whole thing. Oh. Um, and it's really, really good. And what he's done is he does like a page a week and it's, you know, full comic book quality mm-hmm. um, pages. And then he also uh, assembles those issues and sells them on Comixology to help support mm-hmm. the comic and stuff. So, yeah, I have a. Kind of- yeah, I have a friend who does that, um, and I, he he assembles it more into like full like graphic novels, like the thicker right. things, uh, yeah. and then he gets friends to write uh, like short stories to put in the back. puts a lot of fan oh. art, and um, there's there's a lot of added stuff to it basically at the end to make it kind of worth buying the print, and it works really well for him. So yeah, uh, that's a really good I think model for web comics. Yeah. yeah. And it's nice then because then you have people who can read it for free and still enjoy what you're doing right. and you can really build a good following that way, I suppose. But, right. It, it's a constant output of something, yeah. which mm-hmm. I think in like any kind of art community, it's good to just ha- always have something coming out. Yeah. Yeah. And you're yeah. creating like consistent content for yeah. people and they, they're never forgetting like, you know, if you make a comic book, it comes out at once and then like yeah. it takes a while before more content is published. So yeah, that, that's yeah. really yeah. cool. Well, yeah. I know with uh, if you ever do are looking, you know, looking to get published with one of the bigger guys, it's always good to, to just have something. And yeah. so, just as a tip for most people, I suppose. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome. Um, so, if you if you were to like go back to to your younger uh, aspiring self and, and be able to give some advice um, to maybe some of the people who who don't know anything about business, don't know anything about the comic business or anything like that, and just want to make something, and they, they, you know, they're just wanting to make something. Are there any tips or anything you could say to someone to sort of advise them on that? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Super professional. My phone's going off. <laughs> sorry. Uh, so I think the biggest thing for me in this past year has been just make stuff. Yeah. Um, whatever you need to do to make stuff. Now, don't Put yourself in a crazy amount of debt to do it. Um, <laughs> pay cash if you got to pay money. Right. But you know, do the research, do the reading. Um, in my, I mean, I'm a big reader. But you can never read enough about the subject you're trying to conquer. Mm-hmm. So, if you want to be a writer, read about writing. Read books. Um, read comic books. Um, if you want to be an artist, now I am not an artist. I can't draw worth anything. I mean, I just have no artistic ability. So, um, for me, it's, it's been about how can I become a better writer and mm-hmm. just constantly challenging myself, reading things that I d- wouldn't normally read, yeah. um, stepping out and reading genres I don't normally read. Um, <laughs> now I, I'm not a big, uh, romance novel guy and I'm not gonna become a, a big romance novel guy, right. but you know, I, I'm a big, I like sci-fi, I like fantasy and stuff like that, um, I've had to kind of challenge myself to read like nonfiction mm, um, mm-hmm. to try and understand st- storytelling in terms of trying to still tell a story like it actually happened. Right. Um, mm. And that's hard. <laughs> yeah. There's non- like, nonfiction can be so dry. Yeah, um, for sure. And stuff like that. <laughs> so, you know, practice, practice and just make stuff like who cares? Um, I'm a big, I used to, I used to be, really big on what people thought and I still care what people think. I want people to like wh- whatever I'm putting out, but sure. I don't want them not liking it to stop me from making what I want to make. So, yeah. yeah. Well, and in today's I, world uh, too, I mean, it's a big world and you can get into some niches and still get quite the following really. Oh yeah. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. It's easy to let that like caring what people think sort of freeze you into like not finishing a project. I mean, it can mm-hmm. be crippling sometimes. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, I think that's that's the biggest thing that I've noticed is I, I've heard a lot of people mention how they want to start comics or they want to start a comic. I've heard about a lot of unfinished scripts, you know, or stuff yeah. that, yeah, I heard very exciting ideas on the front end. And then you see stuff that just doesn't get followed through on or finished and stuff like yeah. that. So, mm-hmm. you know, the fact that you did research and read, you know, looked at people who are doing what you do now but doing it successfully and like you know okay what are these guys doing and like how how can i sort of mimic that or whatever i mean that's that's pretty cool i think that's something anyone who's aspiring to make comics should definitely look at doing what i know for me uh like i as far as doing research goes i think i researched doing a podcast for like a full year 
And, mm-hmm. it, and it got to like the point where my wife was just like, if you don't make a podcast, like in the next two weeks, uh, you're not allowed <laughs> to do podcasting. <laughs> and that's what got me like to just do it. And then it just, I kept doing it since then. And so, I mean, and uh, I'm applying that then to pretty much everything else in my life. And it's just like, yeah. and, and, you know, if you hit a roadblock uh, and the, you know, you don't know how to proceed forward, just do it step by step, do the parts, you know, and you'll figure yep. out the rest for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and that leads me into a, a thing that I, I found out about you, and that we have something in, in common, is that we both want to get into lettering. Yes. Uh, is that yes. still something you're trying to do? Yeah. Um, so i I probably won't be lettering the web comic because yeah. the person who um, might be on the team for lettering is much much better than I am. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I've actually been doing small projects here and there. Mm-hmm. I, I offered my services for free. And, you know, it's not, uh, you know, Marvel quality lettering, but, um, I've done three or four little short comics for people. Oh, nice. Um, and, and it's not, you know, not a lot of content. It's like a couple pages a piece, but, mm-hmm. uh, it, I'm getting my practice in. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And I mean, I guess, I guess, uh, what has led you to pursue lettering, I guess, specifically, like what stood out to you there? I think it's because it's something I know I can do, mm-hmm. um, I, I'm not an artist, but I can. I'm I'm good with design. I'm good right. with making clean design on pages and making it look good. Mm-hmm. And I think for lettering, you have to have an eye for space, right? Where to put things. Um, working with special effects can be difficult because you don't want to crowd it with crowd the space with special effect stuff, right? If you don't have to, and um, finding the right font and stuff like that. That's stuff I've always enjoyed doing when it yeah. comes to designing is fonts and stuff like yeah. that. So. So do you do you have a des, do you have a design background then or that's just something that's interested you interested you? It's just always something I've dabbled with. Okay. Um, I have done a lot of different design things in the past. Um, I've made logos for friends and stuff like that. I've okay. um, earlier last year for a little bit, I sold T-shirts that I did designs for and stuff like that. So really cool. nice. Um, not anything where I'm highly qualified or certified to do it, but it's fun. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and if you just I think a lot of designers just have a good eye for it, uh, which I mean, as we see, saw with that variant cover you have. <laughs> so that's good. Um, uh, I had another question. So then with lettering that you're kind of getting into, then are you doing like that full aspect of lettering where, where you're doing like uh, the sound effects as well? Or are you just focusing on the word bubbles for now? Um, I, the couple comic, one of the comics I did, it was four pages and I think it was all, speech there wasn't really any sound effects um yeah. another one did have sound effects and so i kind of messed with that a little bit um and the guy really liked it so I, i'll take that nice. as a compliment yeah. as i did an all right job <laughs> uh, but that's that's the hardest part um, yeah for me is is messing with the lettering sizes and trying to shape shift it so it looks like a special effect and not just right. like i put blam in a font you know <laughs> yeah. up on the yeah, do you, do you have any go-to fonts for that stuff then or um my Com- so comic sans have... all the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean obviously. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. I I'm, I'm pretty sure they'll that'll get you uh, blacklisted if oh. you just use comic sans. No, no, yeah, I'm no, sure. I'm just joking. I'm going to do it now. <laughs> <laughs> um there's a so there's a website um blambot.com. Yep. I was just going to say that, yeah lettering offers free lettering fonts um i had uh somebody send me like 65 lettering fonts that they use Mm -hmm. and so that's been a great help and i don't know any of the names off the top of my head yeah so (laughs) just go to blambot and look around that's pretty much it yeah um have you have you so you just do digital i guess have you looked into hand lettering at all no because um i have really shaky hands and so and lettering is kind of off the table for me. Um, I have terrible handwriting and yeah. I have shaky hands. So that goes in with the drawing and stuff. So okay, okay. Yeah. That's, a, that, that's a style. <laughs> it, it's tough, man. Like uh, I, I can't imagine. I have very shaky hands as well. And some of the people that, that used to do that by hand all day, it just astounds me, man. It's, yeah. it's, uh, you know, and it, and, and the most astounding thing is that it probably requires just as much discipline as like comic book illustration. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's work that no one will ever really give you credit for it. You know, like it's like if, if no one noticed that, then you did your job well. And it's like, yeah, that's, it's, that's pretty much it. That's what I've been told is if it's good lettering, nobody's going to notice, but if it's really bad, they'll know. Yeah. So. But you know, it's the people that, that hire those people who are the people who notice. 
Yeah. yeah. If that makes any sense. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Yeah. In, in that small sect of people who yeah. who really enjoy comic book lettering, but it's a, it's amazing how much good lettering can can enhance a very good comic and yeah. it's also amazing how much bad lettering can can totally make a comic difficult to read. I mean like your eye oh, yeah. just gets caught on all sorts of little things and stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's always been something I've admired, people's ability to do that. So Yeah, and I think just I have a design background. Uh, it's what I went to school for, and I do web design now. And so I've always had a fascination with typography. Um, mm. And so then as soon as I found out that you were getting into lettering, and, and like I just bought uh, DC. They have a book uh, that's like DC's Illustrating and Lettering, I think, book. I don't know. Like they, For some reason, they combine those two things. And so I think it's coloring and lettering. And so oh, okay. I just bought that and I was like reading through it. And then I saw that you were oh, doing cool. lettering. And so I was just excited to talk to somebody else. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's doing oh, lettering, it's fun. So. It's yeah. fun. I, I really enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So um, I, I know you're a writer. Is that your day job as well? Or do you do, you do something else during the day right now? No, actually, my my day job is I'm an associate pastor. Okay. Um, oh, cool. Up here in northern Michigan. And so mm-hmm. that's what I do most of the time. Um, okay. And so I work from home, I mean, 75, 80% of the time. So if I don't have something immediate on my desk, I'm usually writing or um, I have uh, two kids, so I take care of them mm-hmm. and stuff like that too. So cool. Has, yeah. has, has that work um, that you've done as an associate pastor? Because I know – the the closer story there there's some religious aspects to that story has has your work as a pastor influenced that a lot yeah um it has uh i kind of it kind of influences all my writing um mm-hmm. just with all the reading that i do as an associate pastor and the knowledge that i have been able to gain of all the different religions and things like that um right the stuff in closer um delves kind of into like cult mythology and stuff like that so Hmm. um it goes into false religion and the cult mindset and stuff like that and the idea of of having control over people just by promising them things right interesting um and i guess then has that influenced just generally your comic book reading i guess just because a lot of comics tend to maybe not be agreeable to a lot of christians i suppose um, um, there's I, very rarely, to be honest, okay. um, I've always, um, read and watched and, um, kind of like just kind of whatever. Yeah. Um, there's some things I, if I start watching it and I go, eh, I don't really want to watch this. I won't. Right. Um, uh, but I haven't, I'm pretty picky with my comics anyway. Right. Uh, but it hasn't, I don't, I wouldn't say that has influenced me. Okay. It's more like I see something I just go, that doesn't sound good to me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool when you write or I guess like, like how does, how does your inspiration come? Are are these ideas that you sort of collected over a long period of time or are these sort of things that, you know, cause like when I, when I draw or, or illustrate or whatever, you know, one of the things that I do, it seems like I'll draw for like four or five days and then I won't draw again for like, you know, two weeks. So how, how does your creative process work in that way? Um, it's kind of like that. Um, I will get, a story going or I'll get an idea going and I'll kind of jot down. I've got a notebook that I kind of jot down ideas in and stuff like that. Um, a lot of my writing, um, I mean, closer came. So right before I met my wife, uh, was kind of a darker time for me. And so closer came at that time, Hmm. um, just before I met her. Um, and I, and I, uh, not to get too too sappy here, but I was a guy who longed to be in a relationship, to love someone, and to you know to have that. And um, so the the idea for closer came with you know what if I had that and it was taken away from me. Hmm. Uh, and so it's kind of like like I, I'll ask myself a question and then I'll write about that question um, for. Um, this webcomic series, uh, it would be the question of what, you know, what if I could look at memories over and over and over again, how would that affect me? How would that, um, and so I'll see that, I see that in the main character for that. Hmm. So it's, everything's very personal for me, um, at different points in my life. So, 
are are any of the characters that you write about like because i know one of the parts that kind of made me smile or almost laugh a little bit was in the support group when you talked about <laughs> the different people at support groups and <laughs> yeah you know I've, I've been to different types of support groups throughout my life for various different reasons and yeah you come across some interesting folks there i mean do you base any of your characters off loosely or or specifically off people that you've met in your life i i don't think consciously i do but kind of like you you know i've talked to a lot of different people and um being in the job that i am as an associate pastor i talk to a lot of people who have a lot of different problems and you see them react to their problems differently Mm -hmm. um and so that's i guess that's kind of where i pull that from and then you know even from how i approach problems and how i've approached problems in the past it's very much like okay there's some people who will go head on there were some people who will just kind of make this veil to cover their problem or they'll, you know, make an excuse or, or what have you. And so, yeah, I guess it does. I didn't think about that, but it really does. It really did come from a place of, well, I've seen that a million times. So Yeah. Well, and I, I know it's like, you, you don't want to speak towards that, like derogatorily, you know, I'm sure like it's not negatively yeah. talking about any of the people you've come across, but yeah, as, no. a, as a pastor, I mean, I'm sure, or an associate pastor, I'm sure you come across people in all walks of life, you know, so it's it's probably a pretty good fodder for writing to, to meet all these sort of different types of people, you know, mm-hmm. you, have, you have sort of an arsenal of, like, characters to pull from or whatever. Oh, yeah, I, I definitely meet all kinds of people from different walks of life and uh, different backgrounds and things like that, and so that does play a big part into my characters, and they're all very much different mm-hmm. Um because of that and the fact that uh everyone i meet it's uh it's cool because we can all meet we all meet in the same place in the same way but we're not from the same areas i mean even now i wasn't raised here in northern michigan i've only lived here for a year and a half Mm -hmm. so i'm coming into a culture that i'm not familiar with and so Mm -hmm. i'm learning um and so that I, i have to learn a lot about my culture every time i move someplace and so you know that plays a lot in it too Mm -hmm. nice um so having come up with like especially this story uh that maybe like leaned a little bit on the fact that you were single and thinking about you know a relationship like does that has it changed then you know since the fact and having been in a relationship for five years and then it just now getting published a little bit um, I think that the relationship between Nathaniel and his wife became stronger. Mm-hmm. Um, when I originally wrote the story, they were having problems before hmm. she disappeared. Okay. Um, and so that played a big part in it. But now with this, they were happy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that, I, yeah, I think that has played it because uh, I'm happy in my marriage. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. very happy well, in my relationship right, right. with my wife. So, yeah. Uh, and and her the wife's name in the book is Marie, and that's my wife's middle name. Mm. Um, and I always put uh, Marie somewhere in the book, whether it's like somewhere, you know, if if I'm writing a story, somebody's just shouting to somebody down the street. They're shouting. <laughs> yeah, so that's awesome. just uh, yeah, Very yeah. Cool. And and I gotta say, it was a little refreshing. I feel like in a lot of stories like this, it is kind of, they tend to have be having issues with the marriage because it kind of adds a little bit more discord to the already greater discord. Yeah. And yeah. so it, it was maybe a little refreshing, I think, to me that they were having a good relationship or I mean, and it kind of still creates a little bit of discord because then you're all like, you know, is that just what this guy thinks or, or you know, were they really having a good marriage? But right. Um, I mean, because that, that's always going to be in the back of your head because she did leave. Why yeah. did she leave? And and I think that's then the major cliffhanger and what we'll get into with the later story. But um, yeah. it, it definitely I enjoyed it, I guess, and it, and it, it allowed me to keep wanting to read it. I suppose so. Um, well, and I will say this is not Gone Girl. Good. I, yeah. had, like, <laughs> I had like four or five people ask me, "Is this like Gone Girl?" Yeah. It's not. It's the only similarity between this story and Gone Girl is the fact that there's a girl in it, and at one point she was gone. Yeah. That was it. Okay. That's the only um, the the reasoning behind the disappearance. Yeah, it, everything is different. It's you can not... always you could piggyback on it maybe and change the name to Gron- Goner or <laughs> something like that. I, I think that's a disassociation you maybe, maybe want to keep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I I I had a question on the story, and it may or may not be something that you can talk about till it releases. But the scars, um, that oh, yeah. the that she has, 
is that going to be a question that you decide to answer or is or is that something you'd like to wait and sort of let play out through the book um i'll let it play out but i will say that the scars are a big thing they're a big part of it okay Um, and it comes back to that question of okay so maria is self-conscious about these scars what if somebody came to her and said i can make those go away Mm -hmm. okay cool what what would she do Mm-hmm. obviously yeah. jump at that chance i mean i can't imagine what it would like be like to be like you know disfigured in that way to where yeah. like you know it's always you know what people see on you and stuff so that that's a really right. interesting proposal to make to someone like that mm-hmm. so very cool was there anyone in your life that that sort of like maria i mean was that did you take inspiration from your wife for for that character or was that something you just kind of thought up for as someone different no, it was just the only similarity between her and my wife is the name. Mm. And I, I made sure I told her that. Um, <laughs> okay. I, you know, I was like, now I'm going to, you're going to read this story and I want you to know I'm not basing it on you. <laughs> right, right. So yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. It was, it was just something I came up with. It's not based on anybody. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so getting into some new territory here, who, and I, we talked about some comic books that you like earlier. Do you have any, uh, authors that that you're just huge on that you you've always you know you're a big fan of because i know we talked about paper girls brian k vaughn is one of my all-time yeah. favorite authors i i'll love everything yeah. he writes but um yeah i actually i'm a huge fan of uh shamelessly in fact i will buy anything that rick remender puts oh, out oh man will, how are we not best out. friends yeah <laughs> <laughs> have you played Did his you? game Did you no write, he wrote uh bullet storm it's not great <laughs> Oh yeah, no, yeah, and Dead Space. He wrote Dead Space. Oh, he did, oh I didn't was, know that. Really? He was involved in the creation of Dead Space, and I love Dead Space. Was that then nice. too? I didn't yeah. know that. That's yeah, cool. I didn't know. I just knew uh, the Bullet Storm one, so I went, I, I went straight out and bought it as soon as I found out. <laughs> I played it for I don't know three hours and got tired of it. So. That's the one you could just pull people up and like kick them in the face and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just a yeah. it's a run and gun game. It's it's good yeah. for getting some aggression out. That's about yeah. It. <laughs> <laughs> I've been playing one of those lately, actually. I just got a PS4 for the, you know, like three days ago. It's my oh, first yeah. time ever having it, so it's very pretty. I got the it. I got the last <laughs> the Last of Us, so I've been shooting zombies for the last four or five days. Yeah, I was oh, gonna man. ask you about that after the podcast. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of like been a a little bit of a detrimental thing because like whenever I get into a game, I'm very like immersive and I'll just yeah. like I'll play it nonstop. Yeah, to the point I, I have that same problem. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, man, I got show notes to write like in in a day, and I, uh, I need to get that done. So, yeah. Um. So, Rick Remender, what? What? <laughs> back what, to the question. Yeah, back yeah. to that guy. What? <laughs> what? What do you? Because I don't know if I've ever read a comic book by Rick Remender. What? What has he written that you're like, oh, you got to read this? So, um, Black Science is the big one. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Okay. It's maybe his newer one, and it's an ongoing still. Yeah. I, so I love. Um, black science and now he also wrote back a few years ago on candy x force yep um that's what got that. that's what got me back into comics that that precise it was series. very good it was very amazing good. Um, okay. i can loan it to you yeah yeah i think you actually brought it over at one <laughs> yeah, of the yeah, yeah. casts and kind of showed it to us because mm-hmm, so. mm-hmm. um, so, well, and that's the same writing team or because uh the x force uh it, it, that's remender and opania who are mm-hmm. currently doing uh seven to eternity and oh that's, Seven to Eternity is oh, fantastic. Um, I picked that up when the first issue came out. Mm-hmm. And that was really when I started was starting to get back into um, comics, and I was contemplating writing. Mm-hmm. Um, and the fact that he's able to create these worlds now, how he has all these different series going on at the same time, all yeah. these different worlds, all these different rules. Um, it's just amazing to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like I've listened to his uh, him do interviews about writing and mm-hmm. how and his writing process and stuff like that. And I'm just like, wow, I I can't even see that from here where I'm at. You know, yeah. I can't even well, it's process of, what he does. A lot of practice, I suppose, just compartmentalizing yeah. your brain a little bit. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. I, I run into that issue because I run – or I I do not run I I do indie Tuesdays um I help run it but like I we read a lot of books on that mm-hmm. um and then I help run NCR which is a DC Comics podcast we do so yeah. it's like I'll read comics Thursday Friday and Saturday and it's like you're switching your brain from like superheroes to like mm. 
Paper Girls to <laughs> to like yeah. you know all sort whatever other indie titles you yeah, know yeah. Vampirella or whatever you know whatever we happen to be reading that week it's it's really tough to do, mm-hmm. um, but you know guys like that man they were just they at one point they were just like someone like you or me who had like an idea like hey I want to yeah. write write about this and they mm-hmm. they put the work in and did it and I mean it you know it, it's it's a few short steps to get to that point you know it's it's just all well. Not a few short steps. It's a Maybe lot. Maybe a few of, long it's years. A, it's yeah. a, it's a hard, hard, long, hard road. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, it, it, you know, just doing it, I think, is, is a big thing. So so mm-hmm. that that's pretty cool. Yeah, Remender, though, he, he's got a very cool style now that I know he wrote Seven to Eternity. Because Brian K. Vaughn's one of my favorite, but it seems like a lot of the things he does – he does just for the sake of adding shock value and stuff, mm-hmm. which like in, in saga, you know, like I've always loved saga, but one of the things I don't like about it is the fact yeah. that they just do things like vulgar obscenities just for the sake of shocking just... the audience, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. and remender doesn't really seem like he, he sinks to that. Well, and he, he's a little gritty, I suppose. Like his story is always like, especially seven to eternity. It's like a really nice Western, like fantasy yeah. Western, uh, yeah. and, and especially like, uh, uncanny X-Force, like yeah, that one got a little gritty at times, uh, and like kind of messy as far as like the plot and what was going on, but it was never like shocking, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for sure. Yeah. It's not, it's not really in your face. It's very subtle yeah. little things here and there. And yeah. he's very effective at just, um, basically like when he, cause when he opens up these stories, he doesn't take the time to explain all these things mm-hmm. it's just you got to just go along with it this is what's been happening right uh, yeah when black science opens up it's not tell you the the fourth and fifth volume that you start getting questions answered from the beginning of the series so oh, good to know. you know from from how did we even get to where issue one started yeah uh-huh, uh-huh. and that was one of the things that kind of it was off-putting to me about seven to eternity at first um yeah but then after a while i sort of respected it a little bit because it was like you know, he's not really giving you, you know, he's not handing you the stuff on a silver platter. You got to like work at it and figure out what's going on yeah. and stuff. And it's, it's a very well constructed world though. It's, yeah. it's really good. Well, and it, oh, yeah. it allows the story to be a little bit more complex as, as well. Yeah. I feel like. Yeah, absolutely. So very cool. Well, we are, uh, we are just about in an hour here. Um, mm-hmm. is, is there anything else that you want to plug, uh, on here? Like, I know we talked about your, your Kickstarter a little bit. Is there anything else you want to promote? Um, let's see. Uh, well, I will, I will shamelessly promote, I just re- started writing reviews for Geekery Magazine and cool. Comic Crusaders on Twitter. So you can follow them at Comic Crusaders and at Geekery Mad- Magazine. So I, uh, thankful for the opportunity to write some comic reviews. I'm getting to read some stuff that is very interesting. Yeah. Uh, what kind of yeah, comics so. are you guys covering there? Just everything or... So with Geekery Magazine, it's mostly going to be like small press and indie okay. uh, stuff. It's you know not gonna I'm not going to be reviewing any. I don't think Marvel or DC mm-hmm. or I don't think any Image either. I think yeah. it's mostly gonna be like you know like Boom and Black Mask and um, the really some, small stuff basically. Yeah, self published cool. stuff. Right. So it's been really cool so far. Yeah, that's really cool. That's awesome. Very cool. Yeah, I love writing comic book reviews when I get time to do yeah. it. It's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it really it, it really helps your your writing chops too to to really take a close look at like how did this person construct this story or whatever mm-hmm. it's it's kind of like a case study almost yeah so. yeah very cool dexter did you have anything else no i i we answered all my questions awesome um, i mean anything else to plug or uh, or just uh, or what, advice, what is it, or just anything else. What is it you say, Dexter? Well, then my last question is, how can we make you internet famous? So, how can you make wh- me internet famous? Where can we find you? Uh, well, uh, I'm active most on Twitter, and my Twitter handle is JMB Writes. And uh, I have a Facebook page, and it is JM Brian Writes. Um, but I don't do a lot on Facebook. Um, to be honest, I can't. I don't like <laughs> Facebook very much. I don't like being on there. So the most I ever post on Facebook on my personal page is just pictures of my kids. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I will. I will shamelessly. She's in the other room. She can't hear me. But I do have to say to any comic creators out there who have awesome spouses who let them do what they want and do what they love, um, you are lucky because my wife allows me to write and 
spout nonsense at her 24 7 so <laughs> she just yeah. kind of deals with wife. it yeah. like, i don't know what you're talking about but good job yeah <laughs> no i know man i i think dexter and i are both yeah. really blessed in that like you know my wife i started this podcast and and it took up a large chunk of time and then i joined a second podcast <laughs> that, which is this this one i started ncr and then i joined this one and now we've started a third one where it's a video game podcast and my wife is just we call her ariel the oracle because she's always behind the scenes writing stuff for us she manages all of our written reviews and she mm -hmm. put and she puts up with having like almost 20 guys in and out of our apartment every week you know so it's it's <laughs> you know to to talk on shows and stuff like that so it's it's really amazing to have a spouse that, that's supportive of of your ambitions and stuff like that so yeah mm -hmm. yeah huge props for that for sure yeah my yeah. wife's amazing as well. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, like I wouldn't be podcasting if it wasn't for mine. So yeah. Yeah. An amazing wife is a good thing to have. They're all, they're yep. always behind the scenes making us better at what we do. So awesome. Awesome. Okay. Well, uh, I guess that's it. Uh, unless we got anything else. Thank you again so much for taking the time to yeah. speak with us. Um, make sure and let us know when, when your comics done and like ready to, to, to where we can purchase a paper copy. We'd love to review it on, on the review show as well. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll hook you guys up. No problem. Great. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much. Good luck. Sounds good, guys. Thank you so much for having me on. Yep. yep. Bye. Bye, man. Bye.